joined now by Texas student athletes Timmy Allen, Andrew Jones, Marcus Carr, Courtney Ramey, and Christian Bishop. Thanks for joining us. And we'll take questions, please. Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. Uh, I guess I'll go with Courtney and Timmy and then let everybody else answer. Um, both you guys have had different journeys to get here, and uh, I know everybody has an opinion on this, but what does it feel like to walk out there, see the logos, see the court, and to know that you're, you're back here? And, and for Timmy, that you're here. I'll let Timmy go first. Um, it's fun. Oh, I'm just excited to be here. I'm blessed to be in this position with these guys. Um, it's been a really fun year, um, so we're just looking to keep having fun down the stretch, play some ball. It's good to be back here, having another opportunity to play a good team tomorrow. Then it's just good to experience it with uh, Marcus, Timmy, and that first NCAA appearance. If we could have uh, Andrew and then Marcus and Christian, we in, please. Um, this is a great opportunity for us right now. This is the moment we dreamed of. This is the moment that we prepared for when we decided to come back to school and play together. So I look forward to actually, you know, doing what we wanted to do uh, to get this team together. Uh, yeah, for me, it's it's exciting. Um, it's the reason why I came here to play with these guys on this stage, and I'm really just looking forward to it. Yeah, that's the reason why we all do it for March. Uh, yeah, Courtney, or I guess Andrew and then Courtney and Marcus, if you guys want to chime in. Virginia Tech, they shoot a lot of threes and shoot it at a high percentage. Do they remind you of anybody you guys have played this year and what makes it so challenging to defend them at the three-point line? Um, they're a good team, like any other team in this tournament. I think every team in this tournament is good, and then they have an identity. And then I just think every game is going to be challenging, so we have to look at it like that, and they just have to prepare the right way. Like Courtney said, they're a really good team. We prepare for this you know, throughout the entire season, so we've got to go out there and give our best effort. Steve McGargy, Associated Press. For Andrew and Courtney, I'm just wondering, how much have y'all used the way last season ended the tournament loss to Abilene? How much, is that motivation for y'all? Is that something you think about? Or is it a deal where this team is so totally different from last year, new coach, a lot, a lot of changes in the nucleus that it's just totally separate? Like you said, this is a new team, new situation. So we can't dwell on the past. You know, we got new coaching staff, an entirely new team. So we're just focused on this moment right now. Bob Blue, CBS Austin, for Marcus and Courtney and Andrew. Um, you know, it's an interesting way to go about it that Chris has gone about it by starting the year basically saying, we're going to play our best basketball in March. That's, that's what our focus is going to be on. What do you, for Andrew and Courtney, was Shaka like that at all? Do you remember him only kind of, not only, but talking so much about March? And for Marcus, um, just that kind of mentality of right now is it. This is what we're, this is what we're trying to do. Um, I think they're two good coaches. I think they uh, went about things differently, but their main goal was to win in March. That's every coach's goal is to win in March. So I think that's where they're similar. Um, I'll let Andrew answer the rest. Just like Courtney said, two different coaches, two different philosophies on how they go about the season and you know how they want us to play. So the main goal was to win championships. That was the most common goal between both coaches. And now that we're here and we have the opportunity you know, we just need to go out and play our best game, just like any other game. Um, <laughs> kind of like what they're saying, um, even with the coaches I've played for in the past, you know, no coach is, is coaching to lose and no coach isn't coaching to get to this point here in March. So um, that's always been the end goal. Like they said, each coach has their different philosophies, their different way of, you know, the way they speak to their teams. Um, but we knew this was just a huge goal for us. Um, and what we wanted to do. So I feel like that's just why the emphasis was there. Do you deal with the Richmond Times Dispatch in Virginia? Andrew, what was your reaction when the Basketball Writers Association awarded you the most courageous? And how meaningful is that award? It was truly unexpected. Uh, going into the season when I'm playing, I'm not necessarily looking for accolades or rewards. I just do things out of the kindness of my heart. And that reward, that I've uh, received, you know, is, it means a lot to me, you know, because of just the background and history of who started the award and what it stands for and what it means. And it just gives me insight that, you know, continue to do what I'm doing. 
Senator Golden, Austin American Statesman, for um, Timmy, Christian, and Marcus. Uh, those two guys on the end are the OGs. They've, they've walked these UT streets <laughs> for years, and last year sucked for them. Uh, how great is it to be back and, and with a chance to send them out if they decide to not come back uh, with a good tourney run this year? Oh, yeah, it's great to have those guys on our team. Um, they bring a lot of experience, and they've been here before, so they could tell us the feel of the game and, you know, how just things go about in the tournament. Um, for someone like me who hasn't been here, that's big. And same with Christian. He has a lot of experience in this tournament, too. Um, so that's big for me personally and us as a team. Yeah, just being here with a group of older guys is really good for us. I think that's going to benefit us a lot. And uh, we just got to play as a collective unit and be able to send these guys out right. Yeah, now playing with these guys and, and just being with them since the summer has been a pleasure. Um, from showing me the ropes to, you know, just getting out there and competing with them has been special. You know, I've seen them play, Courtney, both of them since, since we was younger, kind of admired their games from afar. So the chance to be on the court with them and share the court with them has been special and looking to continue to do that. Uh, Mark Berman, the Roanoke Times, uh, whoever, whoever wants to answer. Uh, what has made that Texas defense so darn good this year? Why don't we have all of you weigh in on this, if you don't mind? We'll start with Courtney and just go right down the line, please. I think since day one, Coach, Chris, I mean, Coach Beard wanted our defense to be one of the best defenses in the country. And we knew that was going to make our team stand out and give us a chance to win in March, playing good defense. And then we just wanted to carry it over until now. And I think we can do a, jo do a good job of that. But what we did throughout the season, I think it can help us, especially now. I think we sacrificed a lot of our individual games to take on the personality of our head coach, you know, an aggressive, defensive-minded coach who wants us to go out there and, you know, give our best effort, efforts defensively and then, you know, let that translate into our offense. So I think we really bought in to being an aggressive style, something that most of us aren't used to, and it started to pay off for us. Uh, yeah, just what both those guys said, you know, coach came in and we kind of trusted him, knew his track record, knew that he won. and that's the way that he won. And so us coming in here, we bought into that, um, becoming a defensive team. And you know, defense kind of carries you, it travels. Um, and so we're looking to bring that here into March. Yeah, you know, you're going off of what Marcus was saying, uh, offense can't be there every single game. And so defense always travels. And that's the mentality we had to take as a unit and uh, just trying to make that our identity as this team. It definitely started with Coach Beard. Um, we just had to buy into that system, and it's a defensive one before, like Marcus said. So we're just trying to um, do that to the best of our ability and carry our game with defense. Yeah, Courtney, I didn't get a chance to ask you this on Monday, but uh, <laughs> it was hard to miss you giving the TV some side eye when you saw Virginia Tech's name come up. Uh, what was your first thought of that, knowing they had just won the ACC tournament? And now that you, now that you guys know more about them, third best three-point shooting team in the country. How do you contend with that? Um, it was like an inside joke. I just kind of knew that we were going to play them. That's why I kind of gave it to Sia. But knowing more about their team, I think they're a good team. They proved it in the ACC tournament. And I think every team in this tournament is good. And I just think we're, uh, we're prepared. We just got to be ready to play tomorrow when the lights come on. Uh, yeah, Nick Moll, San Antonio Express News. I guess, you know, start with Courtney and work its way down. but. You know, Chris tinkered with the starting lineup throughout the season, and then it's been y'all five consistently for, for the past few weeks, couple months. How have y'all grown? How have you evolved? And how do y'all feel as a five heading into this game? I mean, we knew it was going to be a work in progress. We're playing with a new, new player, new coach. So uh, he did a good job of just trying to put us in the right position. I think of, as of lately, I think we're doing a better job of playing with each other, playing off each other, and figuring out each other's tendencies. tendencies. And I think right now, we can play our best ball when it matters. And that's our main goal is to do that. It starts tomorrow for us. Yeah, like, just like with any new team, it takes time to build chemistry and camaraderie between you know, a lot of guys who are used to being alphas and lead scorers on their team. So with the sacrifice that we had, you know, I think right now moving forward, it's going to be best for us to sacrifice a lot more and really buy into what matters most and to winning and really focus on our strong suits. You know doing what we do best to help the team win. Yeah, no, it's been, you know, amazing going through this year, coming together with these guys and just see how far we've grown um, on our journey. And it's always been our plan was to, you know, go through this journey, the ups and the downs, and, you know, just be prepared for these moments that we're about to encounter. So it's been fun. Yeah, what you're going off of saying with the uh, seating, you know, uh, 
Seeds don't really mean much in March. You know, we're all men. We all put our shoes on the same way. And uh, you just got to come out and bring your A game. Uh, nobody thought it was going to be easy putting this team together. I mean, with all the talent we got on this team, it really don't matter who starts the game. But um, when we move that thing and play defense, we're, we're a really good team. So I think that's all that really matters, just playing together and playing defense and playing the right way. And we can compete with anybody. Uh, yeah, whoever wants to answer, uh, uh, how much is being an old team this year? Obviously, all you guys are, are seniors, and, and uh, uh, with all that experience, how much has that helped you win games this year? I mean, I feel like it goes a long way. I think throughout the history, older teams win, especially this time of the year. And I think us, all of us being older and being through a lot throughout the years of college basketball can go a long way. And I think we're coming together and we're as solid as we can be. And I think the others will agree with that, too. If we can go down the line and yeah, start with Andrew, please. Just the same question, please. Being an older veteran team means a lot, you know, especially when you become connected around this time. That's the biggest part when it comes to March Madness. How well are you connected and how well can you execute a game plan? And it comes with maturity. And if we can show that our maturity and our age can be an asset and be a key component to us winning and playing well, <clears throat> it'll go a long way for us to you know, make a run in this tournament. Marcus? Yeah, kind of like what they're saying, you know, the, the maturity aspect as well as just the experience. You know, we've all played a lot of basketball up here and, you know, been through a lot of situations. So now that we're together and, and um, at this point of the season, we can draw on our, you know, our past experiences as a team together and even, you know, experiences before that and um, really just make that come together, help each other, use each other, and, um, you know, just go out there and play our best. Christian? Yeah, I'm thinking uh, experience helps a lot when it comes to March. And uh, just having a lot of veteran guys on the team will help the team as a unit and it will benefit us out there on the court. Timmy? Uh, like Marcus said, we all have played a lot of basketball, been in a lot of close situation games and just uh, big games, period. So um, I think it will help us down the stretch. And uh, hopefully we can get off to a good start here. Uh, J.R. Radcliffe from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Andrew, with everything you've been through, I'm just curious what your emotions are coming into this tournament. And as we get, you know, as you, as you get closer to the end, one last tournament here, how, how are you feeling? It's amazing, man. It's probably one of the most ecstatic feelings I've ever had. Last year with COVID playing in the tournament was fun, but I never actually got the chance to experience true March Madness with the atmosphere and the hype that comes around it. So I'm excited to be able to come back for a consecutive year and make a run and hopefully go as far as we can. All right, that will do it for the student athletes. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Have a good one. Joined now by Texas head coach Chris Beard. Questions, please. Hey, Chris. Bob Ballou, CBS Austin. Um, being undefeated in, in first-round games here in the NCAA tournament, what is it that you can do in March with your teams? Like, what's the recipe? How, how do you build that mindset for them throughout the year to get them to a point where they are playing their best, point, uh, best basketball in March? Yeah, I think the bottom line is our players um, have won a lot of games in the NCAA tournament, and our players have uh, had some success in the first round. But, um, you know, I've never scored a basket or gotten a rebound, so it's a player's game. Um, with that being said, I, I would say that we, we try to get our guys to, um, to understand, and I don't think we're any different than any other coaches in this tournament. Uh, the, the most important game is the first game. Um, so we set ours up as a four-team tournament. Uh, we'd like to play 80 minutes this weekend. We'd like to win two games. Um, easy to talk about, really difficult to do, especially against the team. We've got to play Virginia Tech, um, a great team, great coach. Um, but I think you know, at the end of the day, it's a player's deal. But one thing we do try to do is explain to our guys 
that the most important game of the tournament is the first game. Uh, Mark Berman, the uh, Roanoke Times. Uh, as the season has evolved, what has made your defense so good? And as you watch Virginia Tech film this week, what, uh, what concerns does that offense pose for your defense? Well, I think with our defense, it, it is our identity. Um, we told the players this year, you know, the season needed to start with our defense as we learned each other. We knew our offense was going to be a work in progress, um, and we did. We got to a great start defensively this season. And then we really believe that your, your season ends with your defense, too. You know, certainly to win six games in this tournament in three weekends, you've got to have a defense that can defend. And um, you've got to have maybe an off night or two offensively but to win those six games. Your defense has to be the staple. So for us, it is our identity. Uh, concerns with our opponent, Virginia Tech, all sorts of them. Uh, hadn't slept in four days. Uh, you know, I would argue um, that this is one of the best offensive teams in the tournament, one of the best teams in the tournament. Coach does a great job. Um, they're really difficult to defend. They've got five guys out there that are a threat. Uh, obviously, the three-point shot's a weapon. Dribble penetration's a weapon. And they can throw the ball inside and play through the post. So they've got really good players. They've got an experienced team. Many of these guys played together last year in the NCAA tournament in a great first-round game against Florida. Obviously, Storm has had some success um, at Wofford and now picking right up where he left off on the biggest stage at, at Virginia Tech. So. Um, we got a lot of concerns. It's uh, really we're playing against a really well a well coached team that's playing their best. You know, I, I think uh, what 13 of their last 15, they just won the ACC tournament. Um, they've been in this survive and advance mode for four games now. Um, it'll be interesting to see how our guys respond because this is the first time we've been in survive and advance mode. As much as we've tried to emulate that this year, this is the first time we we have to win to continue our season. Virginia Tech's been in this situation, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, Coach Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. Kind of along those lines, um, it's one thing to talk about March in November and December, but it's another thing to get here to see the logos, the press conference, the, the arena, all that. And how much are you watching the guys to make sure that they're not tight or nervous or whatever? Because for a lot of them, this is, this is a first for them. and. For the returning guys, they want to get out, get that Evelyn Christian taste out of their mouth. Yeah, it's a fine line. I mean, you definitely want to be aggressive. Uh, you definitely want to have a lot of fun. Um, you know, you dream about the one shiny moment. But on the other hand, you, you got to do what got you here. And for us, that's discipline and poise and toughness. So it's obviously a fine line. For us on this year's team, our game tomorrow, we really rely on our veteran players. Um, you know, we got, we got an older group, as does. Virginia Tech, and I think that's why it's one of the most interesting games in the first round. You've got two veteran teams uh, playing against each other. Has the NCAA, uh, has it always been black carpet in the first round? Isn't it normally blue carpet? Yeah, I've been talking to our guys all year long about the blue carpet. Uh, we got a piece of blue carpet in the locker room. I get the guys to dream about the blue carpet. We've got some guys who have never played in this tournament. We show up here a few minutes ago, and it's black carpet. So. As a coach, you try to have a little credibility with your team. Um, so I'm going to try to explain to the players that I haven't lost my mind. It's normally blue carpet, but I don't know if it's this year, black or what, which I don't mind the black carpet. It's a nice carpet, but we were really looking forward to the blue carpet. Steve McGargy, Associated Press. I'm just wondering, when you look at Virginia Tech on tape, what is it they're doing differently these last 15 games or so that's enabled them to step their game up so much from earlier in the year? Yeah, great basketball question. You know, if, if, uh, if I wasn't fortunate enough to be coaching here, we'd probably be at a sports bar somewhere watching all the games, and that's what we'd probably be talking about because uh, this, this Virginia Tech team, it's almost like they've had two different seasons. Uh, Coach K said it best the other day after they played Duke that he thought that they had became the team that they probably always envisioned they could, and then Coach Young said that's exactly right. And um, I agree. I think, you know, one, uh, they imp implemented some new players just like us, so they had to get comfortable. And I think they've got some guys that really emerged as, like, almost new weapons. Uh, 13 coming off the bench is a bucket. Uh, he's a great offensive player. Um, obviously, their freshman uh, backup guard is, is not playing like a freshman. So I think they've got some guys playing different. I tell the guys that all the time. The first meeting we have coming back from Christmas break, we always tell our guys, OK, first semester's in the books. Now, look, we're going to have to have some different players. And they look around like, we talking about trades? I'm like, not trades. You know, it could be the same people, but different players. Like, we guys need you guys to play different now that we're in the Big 12. And I think they've really emerged on that. 
I think defensively, they, their identity has continued to uh, improve with the gap defense and the, uh, the commitment to keep the ball in the paint. They've just gotten better at it. And then Captain Obvious here, but basketball is always a little bit easier when you make shots. And boy, they're firing shots. They've got some unbelievable shooting going on as of late. So um, that's a great basketball question. I think basically they've just, they, they appear to me to be their best version of themselves right now. They appear to me to be playing their A zone game. Um, and we have to match that. You know, we have to play our best 40 minutes tomorrow afternoon. Um, and again, pretty easy to sit here and talk about, but it's going to be really difficult to do, but that's our objective. Hey, Coach Cedric Golden, Austin, American Statesman. <clears throat> On the bright side, the uh, carpet does match the drapes, so I think that's 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 a good thing. Um, you got you've coached young teams in this tournament. You've coached old teams in this tournament. These older guys uh, are they loose because they they've been here for the most part, and uh, this is a new challenge for them, and they don't they might not have the jitters that a younger kid might have. Yeah, I, I don't personally I don't like the word loose. I like uh, BBU uh, focused but confident. Um, I think if you have some looseness about you in this tournament, you, you'll be done pretty quick. Um, you'll be taking the towels and walking out the black carpet. Uh, <laughs> great towels at the NCAA tournament, too. There should be a story about that. One of you guys should write a story about the NCAA tournament towel. Ask any player or coach that's ever participated in this great event. Um, but, yeah, I, I hope that we're confident. I, I hope that we are who we've been all year long because that's a good team. Uh, that's a team that's had a really good season. That's a team that's proven that we can play with anybody in the country. Uh, certainly in our league, we have some great teams. And I put Virginia Tech in that same category. I think they're a successful team in the Big 12. So we got to go out and try to win another Big 12 game tomorrow. It's going to be difficult to do. But I hope we're disciplined and focused. But I also hope that we're smelling the roses and enjoying the moment and, and playing our best basketball. So to me, that word's probably confident uh, more than loose. Uh, Billy Witts with the New York Times. Chris, the, you said you're, you want your team's identity to be through its defense. How would you describe the principles of, of, of that identity and what, what's important to you? Yeah, from season to season, our defense might change a little bit based on personnel, but we have what we call non-negotiables that aren't going to change as long as we're coaching. And, you know, we certainly want to be a team that doesn't give up easy baskets. So that's transition defense. That's a commitment to – to be competitive at the rim. Uh, we want to be a defense that doesn't foul in bad moments or in unnecessary moments. That's discipline. Uh, we want to be a defense that tries to take something away from you. I know in this game, if we let Virginia Tech do what they want to do, start the bus. Uh, you know, we're going to have to take some things away from them, and I'm sure they feel the same way about us. Um, so, you know, there's some, non, some pillars, some non-negotiables with our defense. We believe in pressuring the ball. And, um, Virginia Tech's got some great passers. Um, you know, 25 is as good a forward passer as I've seen all year in college basketball. So there's some things we're going to have to get done in this game, and, and we, we call those non-negotiables in our, in our culture. Ed, Jeff Howe, Horns 24-7. Chris, you, you kind of kind of piggybacking on that, and you talked earlier in the week about needing to play your best in the tournament. And aside from making shots, grabbing rebounds, all that stuff. When you go back and, and watch tape and you say, okay, we played at our best for the vast majority of 40 minutes, to you, what does that look like? Urgency, uh, not taking possessions off, understanding the first minute of the game is just as important as the 38th minute. Um, you know, execution, doing what we say we're going to do. You know, if we say we need to double block out uh, uh, a Luna, then that's what we need to do. Um, you know, so I, I think just discipline, urgency, um, you know, watching a team that's playing the game and not the scoreboard, I think when we get into that zone of focus, like it appears to me Virginia Tech is always in, especially as of late, you know, we're a pretty good team. Um, I think we can play with anybody in this tournament. Um, we're just going to have to go out there and prove it. And uh, first game is always the most important, and we're playing a quality opponent. This is a team, in my opinion, that could, uh, that could make a run. Um, but I believe that we can too. Uh, based on your experience with the NCAAs, does it concern you or not that, like, as you said, Virginia Tech is coming in as a hot team, and you guys, I think, have, won, have lost your last three. Does that concern you at all or, or not much? Yeah, everything concerns me. Uh, <laughs> you know, you start thinking about competition. Um, you know, I would think uh, they're obviously playing great basketball, um, but, w but we are too. Uh, you look at our last three games. Uh, let's see, Baylor get a one seed. Is that accurate? 
Kansas get a one seed. So, you know, it's not like we're playing, um, you know, schools down the road. So um, we feel like we're playing pretty well right now. Um, and so we'll, we'll see. But I know Virginia Tech's playing uh, what appears to me really good basketball right now. Uh, Nick Moyle, San Antonio Express News. Yeah, Chris, obviously, you all have a much older team, but then you do have Devin, never been in this tournament before, but he's a guy who can bring you spark off the bench. You know, what do you hope to see from him? What do you want him to bring to this game for you all? Yeah, just like Virginia Tech, uh, we'll, we'll play a freshman in tomorrow's game. You know, Devin's in our rotation, and I don't view Devin as a freshman at this point. Uh, he played a lot of basketball at Kentucky last year, and he's played a lot of basketball in Austin for us this year. So I think when you get to the NCAA tournament, it ought to be a little asterisk next to freshmen that have played the minutes that Devin's played. So uh, what I'd like for Devin is for him to be the best version of himself, and that's being aggressive and playing with no fear. And, um, you know, Dev's had a great freshman year for us, and, uh, you know, we'll need him to play well tomorrow for us to be the best Texas team we can be. Anything else for Coach? All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, guys. A reminder, a recording of this press conference available at the NCAA Digital Hub, ncaaveritone.com. That's ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts will be available as soon as possible and will be posted shortly. And our next group will be the LSU student athletes at 2.45, so a little break. Thank you.